Hello, Few Candy here, and welcome back to Funilla County. And last time out, we completely overhauled our starting service area and created three monster developments in the sewage treatment plant, the power plant, alongside our little bit of oil industry in there as well, and our ginormous waste processing facility. <laughs> A little bit of a debate, I think, over whether this was the right asset to have here, but I quite like the effect of it. The city definitely upgraded to some modern waste processing in that area <laughs> compared to the rest of it so far. But it has all left us with quite high residential demand. So today we're going to be unlocking another tile and coming out into this area to start a little European suburbia suburb. So this is actually quite a large area to fill, so I'm going to divide this up into two episodes. We're going to be focusing on the main town centre and the residential up here, hopefully, hopefully trying to get to a population of 11,000 today so that we can get in our trains, because I really, really want to feed the trains from Tyler Town Centre over here into our new suburb, and then which will go on out to the rest of the map this side as well. So we'll be focusing on that today and then we will come in at a later date and fill out this waterfront which we're going to extend from the fishing area out here and down this side bring in things like ferries and a nice little commercial waterfront if you've got any other ideas for that please do drop them into the comments below so let's get started and as mentioned first thing we need to do is unlock this tile we do still actually have another tile to unlock at the moment, but I'm going to save that. We we don't need to extend out into this side today, so we'll keep this one right here. And this will do nicely for now. And I am also going to go ahead and remove all of the trees from this area. So we've got a nice clean palette to work with. Now we've got really slopey terrain here, as you'll probably see. <laughs> going down towards the waterfront and it's actually quite a bit steeper than it sort of first looks if i show you that on the terrain lines here you can see we're going up quite an incline from there so to give us just a little bit more room with our residential assets i'm just going to extend out this flatter area of the land just a little bit not too much but just enough to give us a little bit more room to play with here now we're going to sort out all of the layering and the slopes down to the waterfront, obviously, in that next episode there. So it'll look a little bit dodgy as an edge for now, but it will be sorted out. <laughs> Do not worry. And I have not forgotten as well, now that we've unlocked this tile, we desperately need to sort out this horrendous vanilla interchange and this awful, <laughs> awful highway bridge to go down and then immediately back up into it. And it's also, I don't think, high enough to fit ferries underneath, which is a bit of a problem for me, so... We're going to be removing essentially all of this infrastructure here and redoing that as well in a coming episode. So let's just kick it off and I'm just going to use actually bike lane roads for this because I do want to upgrade this. We've got a bike lane coming in here which comes out from Tyler Town Centre, runs all around it there. This road I feel like really needs to be bike lane through here so that we can get bikes nice and easily into our new suburb. So we'll go like that and then I am actually just going to form a crossroads from here and bring this out just a little bit. We need to be a little bit conscious about building too close to this ring road here. I'm not opposed to building right up to this further along the line but we've got waste processing right here so no one really wants to live super close to that. We can fill it in with a big thick tree border which we will do just to shelter them from the smell <laughs> and the noise. The pollution actually interestingly doesn't extend too far around here so the biggest thing we've got to contend with is the uh landfill site you can see actually this road is almost the barrier for that but like if we build anything over this side of it we'll be absolutely fine from that point of view so i'm going to come in here with a very small little roundabout so uh, it's not going to be big by any means at all i think we're just going to do it four units by four units which should give us a nice Large enough, but small size in here. And then I'm just going to grab our dirt roads to brace it, just in case we get any problems. We want to keep that nice round shape there. And then I'm going to use these roads for the moment, although we will upgrade these to bike lanes at a later date. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring this road almost straight out. And then at this point, we're going to start curving it around a little bit, kind of bring it down round into this corner. And then... This is definitely going to feed over to the other side of the highway here. So let's just curve it around, I think, something like that for now. And we'll leave it as a feeder for when we redo that highway so that we can get it over there. And then from this point, I want to bring this down 
pretty much to there and have this as kind of a main frontage road for the top of our town centre. So we'll have one nice block in here like this and we'll bring this road all the way across. I think we'll go five blocks of 10, so like 50 by 20 for this, just like that. And that's going to house our kind of main town centre design, which we're going to come back to in just a little bit. And then we'll continue this one out straight this way now yeah the terrain <laughs> is gonna start getting a little bit bumpy and now that i'm looking at it i am actually thinking potentially we should make this the road that goes over the highway so let's do that let's raise it up slightly so we can get a nice height on it i'm gonna turn off snap in for this and that is dropping down quite a bit so <laughs> that's again trial and error go back and redo that so we'll snap to angle to get a nice 180 degree angle out of there let's lift it up twice and oh, that's pretty flat quite happy with that and then can we go straight over no we can't but we can leave it here as a feeder so let's go ahead and do exactly that and this road actually let's bring that back a little bit i think we can go further up and then maybe bring it down as quite a sharp diagonal here so let's actually just take this away and we'll use road guidelines to put in a nice smooth curve here so that is slightly less severe that will give us a slightly more interesting road design now also just thinking about kind of connections this one is going to come down to our waterfront again <laughs> it probably won't be like that but we'll leave it there as a reminder and then we're going to bring this one up and over the highway this side and that'll do absolutely fine for now, just to remind us to give ourselves another kind of mainish route crossing this highway. We want to give multiple options, which I know I keep repeating, but it is super important. So what I'm going to do in terms of the suburb designs is we are going to do quite heavy blocks for this, but with quite a few little cul-de-sacs dropped in here and there around it as well. So we'll just carry on filling out this grid and I'm conscious I don't want to get too, too close to this highway. So I think that's probably about our limit. We could maybe squeeze in some smaller houses on the other side. I mean, houses do end up next to highways. That That is a thing. <laughs> so we can't necessarily ignore it. But yeah, this is how we'll do it for now. And we want to vary that grid pattern up because particularly like European suburbia style definitely lends itself to not being a t super, super duper heavy kind of American style grid here. So we want to vary it and do different things along the way. So again, we'll have more like cul-de-sacs coming out up here and probably down here as well. We'll have a few more, maybe some slightly more interesting patterns with these ones out this way. And I'm actually thinking as well in this space, I don't want to get too close to the intersection. If we grab ourselves a dirt road, one thing that's really cool about European suburbia is the one by ones are actually kind of cool assets. <laughs> so we're going to grab ourselves a really like curvy road. I'll actually go to freeform for this. And we're going to bring out a load of kind of little bits like this to create ourselves a little bit more of a slightly kind of slightly lower income style area in this particular location. So something along those lines. Of course, before I zone anything in, I do want to get a district on here. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll just fill in this whole area for now. I'll neaten that up in a little bit for those who are OCD about their district lines. And let's choose the European Suburbia theme for it. So if we come in here, we can add little one by one houses. So we'll go to specific zoning and they do turn out really quite cute. Like it looks kind of neat, I think. <laughs> this is just my opinion, but you can see when we get to the end product, you'll see what it's like and you can make your own opinion on that. But it'll give a kind of very unique neighbourhood for the area and we can come in with lots of nice overgrowth and bushes and natural detailing around that to keep it kind of separate I guess from the rest of the area those are already starting to fill out but we need to jump some electricity across to them so let's go ahead and start filling out some of our suburban grids here and we can pretty much just mass zone European suburbia like we might want to be a little bit careful in some places if the zones aren't exactly four by four because sometimes you'll get a four by four building with a one by one behind it for instance which isn't always the most ideal thing I mean, but yeah, we can generally be pretty mass zony with this theme. Now on these roads, I'm actually going to turn off zoning from one side of this one. I kind of want them to zone along the main road so it's nice and equal here. So we're going to use zoning adjuster and I'm going to just toggle it just to that side and then we'll upgrade this road all through there. 
And what that will mean is that the zoning will all face the main road. So it'll be nice and uh, neat <laughs> when it all comes in. So for the moment, I am just going to give a temporary power connection to these houses out here so they don't keep screaming at us for, for power. Um, but we'll remove that later on once we get some more zoning in. And I'm going to whack it up to three speed because, like I said, I really, really want to try and get to that 11,000 population if we can today. So we'll see how that does now that we've got a lot of residential zoning in there. Now, of course, to help them level up as well, I do want to introduce a few little parks in here. So I'm thinking just off this main road, let's have a playground in this corner. And that covers, you'll see the green bar there, almost this whole area. <laughs> We're going to have a few more parks down here as well. So that's going to help too. But that should be pretty good for the top area that we've got here. But we could also help them out a little bit by placing something this side. Obviously, we didn't want houses too close to the garbage jump. Maybe we don't want a playground either. Maybe a dog park. <laughs> I don't know if you'd like to walk your dog that close. We could even do a slightly larger park out here just to fill in that area as well. We do now also as well have the options from hotels and retreats. I'm not necessarily feeling <laughs> really any of those. So I think we will just go for a plain dog park on this corner and we'll blend that in with a nice bit of natural detailing around it when we come to detail up this area. We're yeah, just thinking on bike paths quickly as well. Let's definitely feed it down this middle road. And I think I'm actually going to do a tree line road here because I think that'll be quite nice. And it is just housing, so no one really needs to like cross the road or come out of commercial to cross the road. So we'll do that all the way down there. And then I am thinking as well, just to give lots of biking options, let's also bring it down this way and past the main town centre and the station, which will eventually be here as well. And we can join it up to this side and let's upgrade this road too. So we remember to bring bright bikes on over that bridge similarly here as well let's make this a bike road and this crossroads coming down here just so that we're keeping that bike in accessibility going around the whole suburb so we've got some of the zoning starting to come in but i do want to have a little think about education as well um elementary is actually fine at the moment and high school isn't too bad but once we get this in i think we are going to want some more so what I am actually thinking for this is I would quite like to, with the high school complex, introduce again one of the sports parks and make this the community soccer park, which I feel like would be quite nice in this space, actually. So let's bring up a road uh, like this. I think that's probably too close, actually. Let's go back to here and see how we can do off that. So yeah, if we plop in the community soccer field here, and this is a really cool little asset. It's like a it's like a local football club team, isn't it? And I think actually, because they're going to be down onto the slope here, they're going to have quite nice views out over the mountains and over the water from the football stadium too. So I think we'll have that in there. And then the other side, I would also like to have the high school. So I'm going to bring out a little additional entrance for this. And then I think we're just going to use actually the bog standard vanilla high school for this and place that one in here. And then in the centre of this little area, the gap that I've left there, we've left enough room for a little small vanilla car park. So let's go ahead and plop that in as well. And it just kind of sits nicely opposite that football stadium there. And for a bit of detailing behind it, we can, of course, go in and use some of our airport aprons, I'm thinking, for this. So if we can just place one behind it, and how big are they? So they're blocks of six. So let's let's go up like this with another road here. We'll just leave that feeding off for the moment. And then we'll add in our airport apron immediately behind the high school like this. Then we can do a nice bit of detailing around this to sort of extend out the, the playing field or the, the yard for the school. I think it's not playing field really if it's a high school, I suppose. Yeah, we can extend out the yard for this area. Let's keep another little access point in here, I think, and we'll bring the fence all the way down the side. But we could actually go all the way like that around the high school. And what we can actually do on top of this airport apron is actually plop some trees. Now, it looks a little bit strange going immediately onto the concrete. If we use a bit of overgrowth around it, that creates some kind of green spaces in amongst all of the concrete. So I think what we're going to do is do this in a few little places here. And in fact, we could actually use the lantana rather than the bigger overgrowth. If we want to make it a little bit smaller, we could use some of these in here. 
like this with a nice tree plopped right in the middle of it. Then we can also go ahead and start getting some picnic benches out and things like that. And of course, let's not forget, we've got plazas and promenades props, which are pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> so we can create some shady area for the students here too. We can create quite a large kind of shaded outdoor learning area like that over here and maybe another one this side as well. And then we can get some of these larger benches and sort of line them up in between the pillars within this little shaded area like that. And then, yeah, so it just sort of creates a kind of outdoor learning area. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking for this. Quite a nice little touch. And then further around it, let's just add in some other benches like this. There's little kind of gathering areas for students in other locations during break time and that sort of thing. Then we can come in with a bit of detailing around that. But I think that's a nice little addition to the back of the high school there. And then this side of it, let's go ahead and add in an elementary school. And again, I'll just use the bog standard vanilla one for this. And we'll come in and do some playground detailing around that when we come on to the detailing time lapse later on. But this does then mean we can start extending out our grid around this as well. I just don't want to get, oh, I'm going to delete that fence there. We can re-put that in. That's okay. We can start to introduce some slightly different kind of cul-de-sac type patterns around here to finish this off. So it's a little bit more broken and something a little different around there. And our population is going up. We're now on 9,000, so that's not too bad already. Okay, so let's talk about our town centre design here. So what I'm thinking for this is I want the library to actually feature very prominently within this. So I'm going to leave a little gap of three either side here. And I want to make sure we're even. So what's that? That's 320, 320. We'll bring this one down here and we'll cross that off. And then we're going to get rid of these roads. Because what I want to do is grab the library. We're going to place this right in the centre of this little extra kind of feature road here. And opposite it is going to be our train station. When we finally get it, it will be placed in here, which will be a nice feature opposite the library. And then in and around it, we can start to introduce some very small commercial assets in here. So we don't want anything too big, but like a small strip of commercial along here wouldn't go amiss. And certainly like a couple of little buildings around the library either side would be pretty good too. One thing I would quite like in here as well is a skate park, because I think that's quite often found in town centres. So we're going to add one in just on this corner like that and see how that kind of fits in. Yeah, it's not too bad. The industrial fence is maybe a little bit harsh here. <laughs> and then we'll just block in some more commercial around it like that and see what we get. And I kind of want it a little bit more wall to wall than these assets here and less of the same thing. I actually really like this little petrol station on the corner so we could keep that. And I don't mind the supermarket too much and I don't mind actually the hotel. I think we'll leave those and we'll see what other assets we can get into here. Let's just talk about the park as well because I want to introduce one of the hotels and retreats DLC parks into here because it has got a pond <laughs> and it's super cool. So yeah, I really like this one. We could actually do a bit of a mirrored design and have one either side. I'm not opposed to that. And then in and around it, we can bring some path designs. But just importantly, quickly, behind this library asset here, I would also like to have some parking. So we could introduce a large car park, although it's not going to centralise particularly nicely with our asset. So I think instead we will just bring in three of the smaller car parks into here. And then we'll do some nice path patterns around this. Let's turn off snapping to road guidelines. We'll keep grids on. And yeah, we definitely want to come all the way up between this. Now, it's annoying with these parks. You can't snap onto all of it. But if you draw a path close enough, they do tend to just kind of join up naturally, which is somewhat useful. So that's what we'll do here. We'll turn off all snapping and we'll just get it as close, apart from angle, actually, we need that one on. And we'll get it as close as we can to this path here. There we go. So it is sort of joined up either side. And then we can bring in extra feeder routes up towards the main road here to connect those in. We can bring these down this way and make a really nice symmetrical path pattern. Now we can actually join into there, interestingly. So I think what we'll do is we'll bring it across a path like that. And then we'll see if we can join into here. Let's turn angle snapping off. 
It's... yeah, it's alright. <laughs> so we'll do exactly the same thing this side as well. Although, I'm not going to snap in quite as nicely there. I think that's just about connected. It has kind of deformed <laughs> the other part of the path there. So I think we can get away with that. And then let's also make it appear like it's connected up to the skate park. So I think that's quite important there. So we'll go like that. And then we can do some nice fence benches and tree designs all around our main centre square here but I think that kind of like frames off the town centre pretty nicely indeed and yeah these assets definitely like these I'm not too keen on the car parking spaces on the side of that so we'll get rid of that one happy with the pancake house definitely we want this kind of small town commercial vibe in here big bite yeah you can stay and I like this on the corner too here Let's just have a little think about services as well. We definitely want to bring in some medical, fire and police services. So medical, I think I'm actually going to drop onto this corner here. This asset is actually a really nice little corner asset. I really quite enjoy that. So I think that can sit in there quite nicely and it's reasonably central within the main suburb, which is a good location to have those. And then fire and police, I think would be good to have fire, certainly, closer to our waste management here. So let's go ahead and actually use the European fire station for this. And we can plot this just on this corner next to our dog park. I think the red brick will go nicely with our European suburbia theme in here too. And then with the police station, I kind of want it to have a reasonably prominent place. So I'm thinking potentially on this corner here, which is kind of next to that main semi-collector, which runs through the town centre here. We could just go with a little vanilla one. Oh, let's try actually, let's try the European police station for this, because I think that will be nicer with our European suburbia. Yeah, I don't mind that on the corner there. And we're filling out the residential really quite nicely, actually. Uh, we've still got a tiny bit of residential demand, but I'm hoping that goes up with this little bit of commercial we've got down the front here. And we can actually go ahead and zone in the rest of this, which I'll come back to in a second. But I do actually want to add our first bit of high density residential into here. Now, high density residential is a massively <laughs> horrendous thing, honestly, in the vanilla game, particularly if you're just using the base game residential assets, which we're going to use here. I'm not going to use a certain theme for this area. I think actually the vanilla assets probably go best with our European suburbia assets here. They look a little bit older and slightly more run down, honestly. <laughs> That's what we're going to go with here. But we have to be super, super selective about the assets that come in here. So I'm only going to do specific zoning. We're going to wait to see what grows in and then we're going to zone in around it. So, OK, we've got this one. So let's zone in the next one around it. And I'm kind of going to stick to relatively large blocks for this, because if you go a bit smaller, you can sometimes get some fairly odd assets. <laughs> I won't lie. Yeah, these ones I'm absolutely fine with. If we can get a whole block of these in, I'd be very happy indeed. These are all right, actually, little high density assets. In fact, I find generally the level ones and level twos are almost better than the higher up levels. <laughs> so it's kind of useful for this, at least. So I'll just go through this really carefully and selectively zone, like I mentioned. I kind of actually i am thinking on this corner. I really want the four by four tower block here. I'd like one kind of large pop in height, maybe two actually, across this block here, just to sort of signify that we've got a little bit of high density out here in the suburbs. I think that kind of block in height would be really, really quite nice. We can imagine our downtown sort of in the background there, a couple of towers and little pops in height around the city. It's always a welcome addition, I think. So I'm going to keep waiting for that asset to grow in here. <laughs> Hopefully it will. Hey, we are super, super close to hitting 11,000 population and getting our trains in. But I did manage to <laughs> whack-a-mole this little design of high-density residential in, which I'm really, actually, really pleased with. I like the little pops in height. Added in a little bit more going down this slope, which we slope down towards the fishing harbour out here as well. Of course, all of this terrain will sort out when we come to do the waterfront area. Ooh. <laughs> uh... Oh, we've hit 11,000 population. I was just too absorbed with that horrendous <laughs> commercial asset that has just spawned in. But yes, we have got trains. We've got an awful lot with this, actually. Monorail, cable cars, level six unique buildings as well. So we've almost got most of the unique buildings, I think, now, if not all of them. 
and lots more policies. Now, we do need to come on to policies as well. We're going to do a kind of whole episode on policies across the city when it's a little bit larger, I think, and trying to shape our city in terms of the education values for different areas and, and uh, definitely bikeability and things like that. But yeah, we've got lots of transport options to play with now, including the trains and the cargo trains, which we'll definitely need to bring in. With the lack of ship connections in this city, cargo uh, via train is going to be terribly important, but also airports as well when we do eventually come on to that. I guess lots of lovely <laughs> things unlocked with this level. I'm so, so excited to finally have trains, but before we do anything, let's get rid of that commercial asset. I'm not having that in my city ever. That's my least favourite one for those that aren't already aware of that. So I'm actually thinking for this, I'm going to use the elevated train station from the plazas and promenades DLC. I really like the look of this and it's going to centralise really nicely with our library, but also give us that elevated rail aspect to it. Um, just to actually have a quick compare with some of the railroads of Japan elevated. See, so this would have the train tracks coming much closer to our town centre, which might actually be quite nice with our slopey terrain. But we're going to see how we go with this one, because I think this will make a really nice modern addition to our little kind of old town centre here. And of course, we do want to bring in the train network. Now I've actually zoned over where we're going to build it in, so <laughs> we're going to remove that house and remove the zoning from here. But let's grab our train lines. Now, I think the key with this, where we've got slopey terrain, is to try and keep this as absolutely level as possible. So you can see that's already sloping down a tiny bit. So I'm just going to pop it up one level there to keep it nice and flat. So let's have a little look how that looks. And I think that is absolutely fine. I'm going to go down to the smallest elevation step, certainly, for this. And actually, unfortunately, this zoning is also going to have to go. So goodbye to you. So we're going to carry the rail network across this road here. Again, I really don't want it sloping down. Let's just lift that up a tiny bit. I really want to keep these as flat as possible, which is the hardest thing, <laughs> honestly, in vanilla, because we're going to have to bring it over this highway and into the middle here. We do actually just bring it up to the edge of the highway there. We can do some nice detailing around this, but I don't mind the height of that. And we'll go to a freeform curve and see how we can get this placed in here. We'll go like that. Now, I absolutely definitely want this right in the centre of these roads. So we're going to put in a little holding place for our rail here, which is obviously way, <laughs> way too high. So let's go back to this and just bring this down a couple of notches. It doesn't need to be raised up that much. I think this is going to get across this road. Yeah, easily, actually. So we can place this in <laughs> once we get it flat. It did work somewhere there. And that'll be our nice speeder road for going onto the embankment. And then we can try and connect this up a little bit more smoothly here. Okay, I think we've got it there. That's actually a very <laughs> smooth railway track. Quite pleased with that, actually. And we can start to see that some of those like layers of transport height, as it were, coming into effect here. So yeah, liking how that's working. And then, of course, we're going to embank the rail all the way along here and bring it round into Serenity Town Centre, which we will design another time. But I'm going to plop in a train station for now, just so we can get some trains running and see how that goes. OK, so we have got that in and it was a lot of uh, playing around with the landscape to get that at the correct heights. But then we can choose our train for this. And I'm kind of thinking, I don't think it's going to get too much capacity, but I don't want a super duper large train. I think we'll just go for the regular 240 capacity train, but nicer than the base game vanilla one. So let's do that and let's also change the colour of our line here and we'll go for we'll go for a nice dark blue for that. And over in Serenity, just to show you, we have used one of the content creator pack train stations. Now, if you haven't got that or indeed the European Suburbia content creator pack, which is frankly probably the best content creator pack there is, Please do go and check out my instant gaming link in the description below. There are so, so many games, including all of the City Skylines DLCs at really amazing pricing. And you can also pre-order City Skylines 2 by there now as well. But it also helps to support the channel. So yeah, we've got this in. Obviously, we'll come back to the town centre design here. It's a little bit rough coming this way. But then you can see it's uh, apart from this little hump here, which I will sort out off camera. The rest of it's actually pretty smooth. 
And it is quite nice having this banked rail line in between the suburb here and the main ring road. This ring road, I think, is going to look super cool once all of the infrastructure's in. And a bit of detailing is done around this. I think this is going to look pretty awesome. Then, yeah, it comes nicely over here and into the edge of our town centre. So we'll see how much use that gets. I mean, is anyone actually using it as of yet? No. We don't actually need to turn off allow intercity trains because it isn't connected to the intercity line. We'll see how that goes. We've got 14 people on that. That's not too bad. There are people coming in and out of the station, so that's great to see. And we do also need to think about transport options around the rest of the suburb. And I'm thinking it's likely we'll bring in a bus for this. I'm actually going to do that on the next episode when we do the waterfront because there's a chance we may bring in some other transport options onto the waterfront there too. But for now, I think, now that we've got trains in finally, I think this is pretty much the setup of our suburb here. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into a detail and time lapse and I'll be right back. So yeah, we have our suburb in and just to very quickly actually point out the trains, there is an awful lot of people using them. Like it's actually really quite busy. Got 237 passengers last week, considering it only goes one stop to the other. It's um it's a busy line, 85 out of 240. And we do also have the City Skylines 2 new commercial asset in and for some bizarre reason it attracts a hell of a lot of customers. I've never seen this many people coming in and out of a commercial shop in City Skylines before. They've definitely done something to that. <laughs> but it's quite funny. 
And I think that's where a lot of these people coming off the train are going to head into this shop if we watch them quite closely. It's it's an interesting concept. <laughs> yeah, see, there we go. They're yeah, flooding in to the game non-stop shop <laughs> to pick up their copies of City Skylines 2. <laughs> Love that. Um, so yeah, let's take a little look at what we've done. And outside the library, we did this little park with one of the dude on the horse statues in the middle with a little bit of tiling underneath, a few benches dotted around and a couple of little toilet blocks as well. And that's the best thing I love about Park Life DLC is the versatility of it, using those assets outside of parks. Like, we get actual toilet blocks. Love that. It's great. Of course, we do have them in Railroads of Japan now too. So yeah, just a nice little bit of park detailing in front of there. And I did upgrade this central bit of road to a grass median here so that people could use these crossings in the middle. Although, yeah, I mean, there is someone using it. They're not super duper used because unfortunately we'd have to do the same thing on this road here. And I do not want to break the bike paths in order to get those separate crossings in. So like most of the people are just going around the outside. There's an awful lot of people walking through our park here as well. I probably should have made it a main city park and cheese the gates because <laughs> there is an awful lot of them but it's really nice seeing all of this activity going around and particularly around the ponds as well i'm liking how they sit in we've just done a basic bit of detailing here with some repeated hedge patterns uh, a couple of trees a few benches dotted around and slightly random patterns actually um and then coming on to the roundabout i just did a little roadie design with a bit of overgrowth in the middle the central conifer which i thought was quite a nice little pretty pink entrance into the area and one thing i have forgotten to do is upgrade <laughs> these trees on this street here so i think we're gonna go ahead and do that and we're gonna use the small green tree i think probably the nicest one for this or maybe a sugar maple yeah i think we'll go sugar maple upgrade that all the way along just like that um so coming back to the elementary school unfortunately i don't think i pressed <laughs> record when i did this so you may have missed it um i put some planter boxes in the corner again to look like kind of uh, educational garden area added a little amount of additional play equipment and then did this kind of outside learning horseshoe seating ring here which i thought was kind of cute little bit of overgrowth all around it and I actually kept the fence away from the right at the edges of the pavements here which I thought was quite nice because we go down to street level it just gives a little bit more breathing room particularly with the overgrowth kind of spilling out around it as well I like how that turned out there's not a huge amount else really other than adding in forest brush in the appropriate places around it so uh, yeah particularly in here we've done a lot of forest brush and a lot of overgrowth around all of these houses I think this sits in quite well actually I'm quite enjoying this little one by one neighbourhood. It feels very peaceful. Almost holiday cabin like actually. It could almost be like a little holiday park on the outskirts of the village. But yeah, sits in pretty nicely there. So yeah, that's it. That's our suburb in. And I'd love to hear your name suggestions for this area. So please do drop them into the comments below. We will come back to detailing up this embankment when we come to do the rest of uh, Tyler Town Centre over there. I think I might have called it Serenity earlier in the episode. I'm getting mixed up to my city. <laughs> but yeah, the rest of Tyler Town Centre there. We will detail up this embankment because I really think this ring road is going to be particularly cool with these embanked trains running alongside next to it. We've got the zoo park fence on the other side. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. And I also really like the kind of layers of height that we've got developing around here as well, with the rail going over, roads going under, up, down, all around. Lots of detailing again needed around this, but we will come on to that. But for today, that is going to be it. So if you have enjoyed the episode, likes, comments and shares are really greatly appreciated. And just a reminder to keep dropping your suggestions into the comments as well as your name suggestion for this area too. But that is all from me for now, so thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you again next time. Bye-bye!